You said me, so Mr. Morrison will scare you alive. I am so excited this morning, this evening, looking at all these beautiful ladies. The gentlemen, I will exclude you for a while. But you've done well. We clap for you. This is a woman's event, yet we have nice gentlemen here, not only videoing us or taking coverage, but also sitting in the seats, meaning some of you are representing, and we are so grateful to you. Amma had to push me here this evening. I was far away in, um, where was I? <laughs> <laughs> Czech Republic. I was supposed to move from there to Canada because the president is going this evening and I was supposed to be there before the president. And this lady said, no, 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 you have to come. So I rushed from the airport and get myself dressed. I went to the washroom and they said, oh, go to a room and change. Let me just get something and come. So I'm, I'm here because of you. <laughs> and then tomorrow I have to, because the president saw me this evening and I'm sure he's like, what are you doing here? I have to get there before he gets to know that um, I'm now coming. But to be here with wonderful women like this, I would do anything. Because I'm speaking on the third, so it means I have the excuse to say that because I'm speaking on the third, I could come um, and get there in two days. I'm going all the way to Vancouver, it's so far. So I'll take two days to get there. When I came and the first speaker I was talking, I was so excited, I'm like, real, we are talking to young ladies. When she mentioned buying of the cloth and somebody thought we are ruining her business, <laughs> I so agree with her. Looking at my profile, after school, I wanted to be a banker because my mother was the first female accountant to the Standard Bank Ghana Limited those days. And then it became Standard Bank Ghana, whatever, and then it came to Stanchat. My father left us, so my mother took care of four of us. And our school fees was paid by standing orders. You know the bank. You put a standing order, so every month they put something in the school. So we're never sacked from school. But we didn't see affluence. It was not like that. We lived in a compound house. We lived with a landlady. You know, my mother was a fancy woman, Elmina. I was born in Adabraka. You put Elmina, I come from Elmina, but I was born in Adabraka. My mother would buy our stuff around this time. She started paying for our Christmas dresses, our St. Michael's panties and all those things. So we dressed well. And obviously a landlady wouldn't like you for that. So my mother, you know, had a lot of issues. And so we had to move to Dansoman. In 83, around 81, there was this woman, Auntie Frances, she was at Laboni, she baked bread. And she used to bring bread to Standard, uh, Standard Bank. And my mother brought the broad ho bread home, and it was nice. So I told her, Mom, why don't you bring some so I will sell? Because when my friends come to me, they enjoy the bread, and I give to them for free. So I will sell to their parents. And she was like, are you sure? I said, yes. So she brought the bread. And I'll go to my friend's houses and sell the bread. And my mother made money out of it. So in 83, when there was so much hunger in Ghana, my mother resigned from the bank. Meanwhile, with all the money that she had, she had bought a Dansoman house. So we had moved to Dansoman. She used the rest to put up a wall. And last stop was uncompleted because it started from first stop. And whilst people were at Sahara, the car would get to Sahara and would have to walk from Sahara to last stop was quite a distance, but we had to live there. And so in 83, my mother said she would stop the bank and stop, because my grandmother used to bake also. So she started baking. And that was when I saw my mother count money. When she was in the bank, we never, never saw her with money. The money is standing order. It is paying school fees and other things. But she comes home with nothing in the bag. But when she started baking, she would count money in boxes and would put on the table and arrange. I was in Accra Girls, I finished school, we went to Ajans door. I'm like, no, I just went and I said, no, I don't want to be a secretary. My mother worked in the bank. She never counted money. Now she's baking and she's counting money. Should I go to secretariat and go and work in the bank and then not count money? No, I will do catering. And she didn't understand, nobody understood me. This evening I want to tell you, it is your passion. What drives you is what you have to go for. Don't just say my friends are in the university, they are doing a subject I won't mention, maybe some of you are doing it. And then because you want to be there, you are just doing it. For what? Do what your heart tells you to do. 
I loved cake. I can cook even now. I can cook from morning till evening and I won't get tired. And I can cook any variety of dishes. And so I said, no, let me look for a school. My mother said, okay, then you go to School of Domestic Science and Catering. I went and I said, no. And my friends were going to the Polytechnic. And I was looking at all the stuff that you buy to go to Poly. And yet you finish and you wouldn't even get in. You have to work in the hotel. I said, no, I don't want that one. So I left. Then I looked for flare catering services. I went there, and it was like one term. I could bake almost everything that they come and order, because corporate bodies would come and order, and we would go and save. And I could bake anything. So in school, I started my business. At that time, Black Caesar was the club of the night, you know. So we used to go to Club Caesar at Circle, Dankwa Circle. And we used to make orders for him, even as students. We'll make orders for him. He'll pay us and he'll serve in the, in the disco. And my friends will come and make orders. So I started making money very early. And then I loved, we talked about mentorship. There's a woman, Efor Bamlabi. She runs a school, May's Day Care Center. And my sister's daughter went there. And I didn't even know her, but I got to the school and it was like a dream I've had because I would love children. So I just wanted to set up a school. I didn't know even how to start it. But when I got to the school, I said, this is what I wanted to do. Who did it before me? <laughs> and secretly, I was admiring her. I started, when I was, um, I started my catering. My sister was doing a national service at a passport office. It used to be at the beach. And I would bake. I didn't have money for a stove. So I used the kerosene stove. How many of you know the kerosene stove? The adults who, the younger ones want to know. You put fire on top there, and you put the stove on the coal pot. And I would bake and sell at the passport office. And I'm telling you, if you know how much I was making from that, and I would dress to kill. And I wasn't buying from the shop, so we had a second hand. I'm talking to young ladies. A guy who would bring us second hand on Friday, we will wash on Saturday. The whole week, I would change like three times a day. And you see me on my high heels and my whatever. And Saturday, Friday evening, he will come for all the things that I've worn, take back to Cantaman to sell and bring me new stuff. <laughs> So every time, till today, till today I go to the shop and I buy with a price tag. If it is above a certain amount, there's no way I'll buy. I won't buy. Why should I buy a brand for somebody? I won't. I look for what will suit me. Even if it is 50 CDs and it looks good on me, I'll go for it. I don't buy because it is expensive. I don't buy because Gucci made it. Who is Gucci? I don't even know him. <laughs> So make your own brand. So when I saw the school, I wanted to, whilst I was going to the passport office, one day at Adabraka, I just saw a nice shop. I passed. The next time, I stopped. I went into the shop. That is Melcom now, Adabraka. And they had nice things. So I said, wow, I haven't seen these things. What? So I started selecting. I buy two each. And I put in a taxi, and I come home. And I'm selling them. I buy for five CDs, I sell for 15 CDs. But you pay 10 CDs before I credit you. So you pay the five CDs later. So even if you don't pay the five CDs, I will still, I'll fight with you, we still make friends, and I sell again. Because I've made my money, I've made my five CDs. And my friends would come and they'll come and do, they'll come and buy. Meanwhile, I never showed anybody why I bought, I bought the things. And I kept selling and making money, and I started running my school. I said, I'll build a school. My dad, so man, we had a plot around the place, so I built in my mother's house. I go all, I ask for a trip of sun. Assuming it was 20 cities. Then somebody told me, if you hide a truck, it's 12 cities. I'm just, I've forgotten the amount, but I'm just saying. And then you go there and buy the sun. It is four cities. So you make four city savings if you go there and buy it. But if you send a driver, it is 20 cities. I said, really? I'll go to Odoko Tipa. I hide the truck, I sit in it. We go to the land side. I go, we go to the land side. I want to buy sand. We pay. Then I said, driver, would you buy uh, 16 CDs? Or so, I, so now bring me four more trips. Now I know the price. So I'm not paying 20 CDs again. Um, and I save. And I buy iron rods and I buy cement and I started building. And I was saving with my mother. Somebody talked about savings. I was saving with my mother. Mind you, I would dress, but it is not expensive. I was eating from my mother, and I was also a caterer, so I could cook. And I saved and started my first school. 
And my school was such that anybody would have brought the child. Sometimes the children sleep, stay overnight. I have students who are doctors and engineers, and they see me, and they're like, Mommy, you haven't changed. And I took care of them as my very own. If you are running a shop, run it as if, even if you are running for somebody, run as if it is for you. I go to, and my parents go to a shop to buy for Valentine's Day. She's a very rich woman. I'm, I'm mentioning her name here. She said Valentine's Day, she forgot about it. So she ran to the shop, Osu. She goes to where the watches are, and the young lady is like, Oh, where do you know where do you? We're ministers, Neto. Into my main chill, baby. She, she, she just looked at the lady and said, Oh, okay, Mati. And she went, and the moment she got to her car, and the lady saw her drive that car, she ran after her. Oh, madam, she said, Eh. Hey. So she came to school the next day and said, Mommy, this is what happened to me. But when you come to my school for admission, it doesn't matter who you are. Once it is your money that is paying me to get money to pay my teachers, I give you all the attention. Every parent that I had, I had a nice relationship with them. But you can't push me to the wall. My husband's secretary or whatever came, I didn't even know her. She came and wanted admission for her children. I received her, I talked to her, I served her and everything, nice conversation, and she would look at me and she would talk, and I saw her off to the gate. And she said, Mrs. Morrison, I am surprised that Mr. Morrison, you are Mr. Morrison's wife. I said, why? She said, wow, my boss. I said, your boss? You work at Morrison and so she said, yes. I know your husband. He is that high and I know you. And for you, I said, this is my business. This is not about Mr. Morrison. This is not about Mrs. Morrison. It is my business. So I'm telling you, what do you do? The relationship you have with your customers is what will sell you. So you'll be here, you'll be a corporate whatever, you run whatever. If you don't have a good human relation, it won't get anywhere. I entered into politics because of a man who came to look for admission in my school. I have a very big school of over 800 people in Sredru. And this man is a lecturer at the University of Winneba. And he comes to look for admission. I didn't even know him. I just came out of my house and he was seated. So I went to sit by him, we're chatting. And we talked and talked and he said, these are the kind of people we want in politics. Your heart, the way you talk. And we talked and talked. And it was like he wanted Coke. So I asked, they said they don't have Coke. So I went in and brought him a bottle of Coke with ice. And he's like, so what are you doing here? I said, oh, I teach. She said, what class? He said, you teach and you are here at this time. I said, oh, I'm a, a class five teacher. I, do, I teach cookery. And I don't have a lesson. That's why I'm sitting here. My lesson is in the afternoon. So we finished that conversation. Then I went home and moved my car from the house. I didn't park on the compound, so I moved out. When he was done with everything, he went to my headmaster and said, can I see the proprietress of the school? And he's like, oh. But she, she said, she's gone out. He said, when I came, they said she wasn't here. So I said, oh, the lady who was sitting, he said, no. I was sitting with a class five teacher. <laughs> he said, who is the class five teacher? The woman sitting there, that is the owner of the school. He said, you don't mean it. She owns the school. He waited for me to come from town. I didn't know he was waiting. So when I got there, he said, madam, you told me you were a teacher. I said, it doesn't matter. I still teach the children anyway. He said, you own the school. I have never seen anybody like that. I said, this is my business. He continued to push me. Madam, I think you'd be a good politician. And that is how come today I am a politician. I haven't even seen him to talk to him. When I was running my Blossom Play School, because I did, I did cookery, I cooked for the children in school. And the parents ordered for me. Weekends, they would let me cook for them. So I had, apart from the school, I was cooking for the student and I was being paid for that one. And the parents were ordering for me and I was being paid for that one because of the relationship. Some of the children have my signature on their birth certificates because they would stay with me over the weekend. They wouldn't want to go home. And even over the weekend, they want mommy's food. If it is not my food, they wouldn't want to eat. At one meeting like this, we had a PT and the parents were like, we want you to have more classes. I said, I don't have money for that. I will do it gradually because I build one at a time. If I don't need a room for students, I don't build. Because why should I put the classrooms down when there's nobody to attend? So I build as the children increase. And at a meeting like this, they decided. I would pay, and I, you know what? I was taking monthly school fees, not termly. 
If I do termly, by the time the term ends, I would have exhausted. And there won't be money to pay my teachers or run the school. So every term you pay, every month you pay. So at least every month I know there's money coming to do everything and then I'll have it. 